science. We get experimental science. We're curious, non judgmental. Oh, that looks very cool. It's a dragon. I'm not sure if it's a dragon smikes or a dragonfly, in fact. Uh, the reason being is we don't have the long abdomen here. So there are our eyes. You can actually make out those omatidia quite reliably here. This is from the Dominican Republic, and it is approximately 30 million years old. The wing number might be two. Hard to tell from this angle what the wing number is. We'll have to zoom in on the other side as well and try to get a better angle. One thing that Elf pointed out that I wanted to highlight are the sensory bristles on the legs. We got a new camera not too long ago and we can see a lot of detail, which is very, very exciting. It is, so if Pimcat, if this is a moth or a moth-like creature, then it's even better preserved because moths tend to be notorious in their preservation method meaning that they tend not to preserve well at all because they're they're soft bodied animals and that tissue can pop under number one the pressure of the amber uh the resin when it's forming and number two rot and bacteria so if it's not solidifying fast enough it'll just break down and you just have an explosion of stuff in the sample if we flip it over we get quite a terrible view, actually. Smikes, this looks much more like a dragon wing <laughs> from this particular angle. The head is a little bit more of a cleaner image that we're getting. There is the antennal structure that we found earlier. The head is pointed downward. There is the compound eye. I think in order to get any more information about the wings and the body, I need to physically move it around versus just laying it down. It also looks like to me, Dacum, that the wings here are damaged. So you see these like open areas right here. That looks like a rip event. No, this doesn't look like our, our normal creatures, Smikes, for a number of reasons. One, if you look at how hairy the legs are, I mean, we have had individuals with sensory bristles, but none quite this. For the hoppers, usually it has a little bit more of a cicada-like head. This one's proboscis is pointed downward like this, and the, the eyes are not quite flanked on either side like almost on a, on a horizontal line, but rather they're a little bit more angled forward. And so it looks to me, if I had to take a guess right now, it looks to me like a roach at quick glance. A lot of the, the body textures and styles look very familiar on that front. So I'm gonna try to find a quick reference and then we're gonna look at some different angles because I don't think these angles are especially helpful right now. I think we need to get more angles for this. See, are insects like mammals and that predators have eyes that face forward and prey that have on the side? Not necessarily smikes. Most of the insects positioning of their eyes is a feature of their flight and where they ended up moving. So if, if you're only flying around like a dragonfly, you have eyes on, on the sides and they have a very high, very low vision. So you can see the UV light because they have the oceli on top that's directing UV so you can get a sense of direction and on the bottom they're having a, a visual acumen for where they're going to land. For animals like the queen ants, they're a little bit more directed forward and that's because while they do have the mating flight, afterwards they have very forward directed movement and the behaviors that accompany them. So those are more the reasons, and I haven't ever read anything where there's a connection between prey and predation as a function of where the eyes are. Not to say that it can't exist, but that's just one possibility. So this is one of the images that I've found, and this is a reconstruction from the amber. And so what we'd be looking for, the head is the right shape. It's that downward pointed head with the antennae structures coming out a little bit further. This is probably a different species of, of roach. Note also the, the sensory bristles running down each of the legs is very pertinent. And what we're not fully getting, but we see it, are the wings. And so this is an older type of roach where you don't have that fixed exoskeleton covering the outside and it's that flying kind of cockroach. This is again, a reconstruction from an amber piece. So this was here in the amber and then reconstructed here. Do roaches have a tail? So you mean in this image, Athena? So this at least right here, behind the animal is a leg coming out. That right there is what's coming. And then here, this to me looks like the back of the abdomen. And then the wing structures are here on top. This is an example of what a cricket would look like. Now you still have a similar head structure that we've been looking for, but you have the really, really long, the really, really long antennae that are here. And then these body segments we don't actually see. So those are very, very different 
than what you see in the amber specimen, right? So here, at least we're not having the same kind of resolution to the same level, at least that could be comparable here. The antennal segments, they can be different lengths for different grasshoppers, but I feel like these might be a little bit too structurally different. So what I wanna try to do y'all is to get a better angle because unfortunately, like, when I saw this piece zoomed out, I thought it looked really, really clean. But now that we're on this side of the sample, it's, I think, even harder to get a real grasp on what it's supposed to look like. Because there's just so much distortion in the amber. Let's look at these images. These are a little bit cleaner in terms of the angle. I think that might actually be the best one. We can see it does look like two wings here, similar to our cockroach. It, what I'm seeing here is it looked like there is a tear on the abdomen and this is getting uh, messing up some of our views so the sample isn't as clean as we thought as before especially once I look at this angle there's this massive stretching here and so this this is probably torn maybe due to the external pressures that were on the sample and it just kind of tended up falling apart I tend just to get rid of them Athena me too ma'am when we were down in the south never pictured looking at any uh cockroaches under a microscope but it's in amber so i don't there's no public health threat as a function of these right now there's just us looking at these and that's the extent that we're getting all right so this is max zoom yeah so dacum this is why i'm thinking again it's that roach if you look at the head structure on this one again you have the large eyes it's in relation to an animal that flies the proboscis and the mouth parts are pointed downward. The antennae are similar to the roaches of coming out of, of this upper part of the head and they're looping around in fact, given how long the antennae are. And then there's also just a bit of destruction that's happened here. Cliff, it looks to me like there is a proboscis down here, but maybe I can do a different angle and we can get a better look at the proboscis. So Cliff, there is a divot on the base of the proboscis right here. And so that is the proboscis that I'm seeing right here. There might be even little mandibles that it's hiding underneath. These two structures here are different colors than the rest of the head and a different texture. So that's where I'm placing the proboscis that it's tucked away as elf says very neatly underneath the sample what are, what are you thinking cliff and elf the difficulty i think for me is that from the opposite side there is some cool detail here but because of the way the amber is swirled and the imperfections we're not getting anything in focus because of the fluid flowed how it hardened and we're ducky occasionally there will be other impurities that are leaked in so different amount of moisture concentration not just necessarily around the sample but within the sample itself uh, that could be a change it could also be a differences in temperature as well as it's hardening so there's all those collectively go into how pure and clear it's gonna be like honey drop consistency or you remember sometimes we see those red squirrels within there so those are a little bit like both of those elements coming in there yeah chat my vote is that this is some kind of roach but it is difficult to further identify the details that i want to see out of it again because the back side has those imperfections and even the front end of it right we have to hold it at a very particular angle to be able to see the existing features again i think it's pretty but i'm very much getting those of those roach vibes so unless folks disagree and it's always okay to disagree and highly encourage. That is where my vote is going on this. So Quoth, that sample, that, that is the leg. Quoth, it's here. I think the uh, looking at the inverted will show you nicely. That is part of the leg. You can see how hairy it is. All those sensory bristles running down the leg. And so it's, it's when I looked at it under the microscope quickly, I saw a tail here as well. But it is in fact a leg of this creature. And we're stuck on whether or not it is a cockroach, you know, possibly leaning towards the idea of it being a dragonfly. The abdomen's throwing me in the wing number, but again, it might be too difficult to actually dissect the way. And we're, I'm leaning towards it being a cockroach. Alex made the good point that it could very well be a dragonfly as well. We're having a lot of damage with this piece. In fact, this time I held the sample at an angle. And so we got to see the abdomen a little better. And you can see it almost looks like it's been pulled apart a little. And then the wings, I think there's two wings total, which would mean that it's much more likely a cockroach. But if there were four, so for a total of two pairs, then we'd be looking at like that dragonfly sense. We do also have the very hairy legs, which all of us, including myself, have been totally thrown off by because of the length of the leg and the placement. So if we zoom out all the way, you know, I very quickly saw that as a tail and was thinking mayfly to begin with.